What's up, Savvy Expat? So I'm not going to dilly-dally around. Should you retire in Bonifacio Global City? That's the million dollar question you came here for and that's the million dollar question we're gonna answer. So with that being said, we got no time to waste. Let's get into it. All right, first order of business. Is BGC the right city for you? Essentially, this comes down to you asking yourself three different questions. Number one, what's your budget? If you have a budget of less than $2,000 per month, simply put, BGC may not be the city for you. And honestly, I know what you may be thinking. Oh, come on, Evan, I can live on BGC on less than that. Sure, you can, but are you really living though? I'll tell you, if you have a budget of less than $2,000 per month, that's great and all, but I really don't recommend you try scratching by with that here in an expensive city like BGC. In that case, it's no different than you having $4,000 per month in a city like Los Angeles. It completely destroys the point of you even moving to the Philippines in the first place to get bang for your buck. I personally suggest if you have a pension of $2,000 per month and less, you're better off taking your money to the province. Your dollar will be stretched much further with the current exchange rates, and plus, you wouldn't have to pinch pennies. Now, on the other side of the coin, say you have a budget of $3,000 per month and up. In that case, BGC will provide you with a very handsome lifestyle. Now, that brings me to my second question that you need to ask yourself before moving here. Are you a city person? As a matter of fact, this should probably be the first question that you ask yourself before moving here. At the end of the day, we're all aware why most expats move to the Philippines. Yes, the people, yes, the cost of living, but most of all, it's because of the beaches and the wonderful nature here. Don't lie, we've all seen those cute Instagram reels of the beaches, waterfalls, and mountains of the Philippines. And if that's what originally attracted you to this country, then there's many better options to settle down in other than a metropolis like BGC. A good percentage of you want to enjoy the Philippines for what it's really known for, the beaches and the island lifestyle. And so if that's your strict preference, then you can easily disqualify BGC as a place to settle down in. However, for the other crowd, take me for example, I grew up in Chicago, a city environment. So I personally enjoy the fast paced lifestyle and the conveniences it has to offer. If you're a city person who even remotely enjoyed living in cities like Chicago, Los Angeles, and New York at a point, then I can almost assure that you will love living in BGC. Think of it like this. BGC is very similar to all those other cities I mentioned, except with this city, it's all without the liberal policies, homelessness, trash, and plus, we have warmer people here. So to conclude, if you really want the authentic, and I mean authentic Philippine experience, then the province life is gonna be for you. BGC just simply doesn't provide that experience as living in a metropolis like this is like living in a bubble. However, if you thoroughly enjoy the city life where you have something new to do every day, by all means, consider BGC. But before you decide to move here, you have one more question to ask yourself. What conveniences do I want access to? Look, it's imperative that you nail down the must-haves of your retirement life in the Philippines. Sure, you may be retired, but do you need strong Wi-Fi perhaps for a little side hustle to keep you busy? Honestly, the Wi-Fi in the province is pretty spotty and weak, so if that's a necessity of yours, I don't recommend that you live out there. But if reliable Wi-Fi is a day-to-day -day need for you, then living in a major city in Manila like BGC is probably going to be your best bet. Or how about being close to an airport? There's only a select few international airports in the Philippines in the case that you say had to take a flight out of the country in a jiffy. The three main airports here is the Clark International Airport in Clark, Pampanga, the Aquino International Airport in Manila, and Mactan Cebu International Airport, of course, in Cebu. I know many of you want to split your retirement between living in the Philippines and living in your home country. Maybe six months in the Philippines, maybe four months in the US, and maybe another two months just to travel around. And if that's the sort of lifestyle that you're vying for, then if you choose to live in BGC, you're only 15 minutes away from Manila Airport. And the last necessity, if you're like me, restaurants, shops, and malls. As a foodie, I personally enjoy having access to a diversity of cuisines, which is just what this city has to offer. And not to mention, I'm guilty to say that there's countless retail stores and malls here to blow off some steam and maybe even empty the wallet after a long week. However, living in the province is much, much simpler. A lot of you have known me for over three years now on the channel, and at least for now, I don't desire an overly simple lifestyle. If you can relate to wanting to have almost everything 
and anything conveniently at your disposal, then you have your answer. All right, by now you should be at least 50% sure if VGC is the right city for you. And if you're still not certain, don't worry, I got your back. We have a completely free guide on everything you must know before moving to VGC in the description down below. I know you're a busy person, so I'll just cut to the chase. For full disclosure, this guide consists of a 13 minute long video and a 50 page PDF for you to download. So if you're keen on claiming that, simply just click the link in the description and I'll email you the guide right away. Okay, enough of that. Now it's time for us to move on to the next topic at hand. If you didn't listen to anything leading up to this point, that's fine, but please open your ears to this. And that is the cost of living in BGC. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. You'll come across countless YouTubers in articles saying that you can live in BGC like a king for $2,000 per month. And I won't lie, you definitely can. Just keep in mind that you will be more stringent with your expenses and your spending. But some even go as far to say that you can live on $1,500 per month in BGC. But word of advice, do not heed these numbers. It's sugarcoated, it's unrealistic, and it tells a false idea of the city. If you want to live even a half decent lifestyle in BGC, let's be real, it starts at $3,000 per month and up. Now, what does this budget consist of? Well, for starters, your biggest expense is going to be your condo's rent. There's a multitude of high rise condos in BGC, so your rent will vary. It ranges from affordable units up to luxurious penthouses. But to give you a realistic average, your typical one bedroom unit within or near the heart of the city will range from $700 per month up to $1,000 per month. As for for the average two bedroom, it'll range from $1,200 per month up to $2,000 per month. Again, this is for a quality unit near the heart of the city. And if you're eyeing for more space, getting a spacious large three bedroom unit will cost you around $2,200 per month up to $3,000 plus per month. So as you can see, based on the rental figures alone, coming here with less than $3,000 per month will be cutting it close. And again, I just want to quickly mention, it's very, very possible to live on $2,000 per month as a single person in BGC. However, the reason I want to make this budget range higher for the ideal budget is because most of you will have a lot of other miscellaneous expenses unanticipated moving here as a foreigner. In regards to your association dues, it'll range from around $150 to $300 per month. Now, of course, what comes with any of your condo expenses is your utilities. First off, your water bill in BGC will not be very expensive because BGC has its own water utility provider. This will cost you around $15 per month. And if you're like me, where you like to keep your condo cold, your electricity bill will range from around $100 to $300 per month, depending on how many ACs you have running. Lastly, if you want strong, reliable Wi-Fi, your high-speed internet bill will cost you around $60 to $75 per month. Now, moving on to your next expense that most of us don't mind splurging on, that is food and groceries. BGC is home to a diversity of cuisines for international chefs looking to display their skills in this country. That said, you have no shortage of eatery options here. On average, if you want to eat out every day, that'll cost you around $30 per day. Contrary to shopping at a local wet market like a Palenque, BGC offers many supermarkets and stores selling international goods. To give you an idea, warehouse stores within this city like Landers and SNR are most akin to stores in the US like Costco and Sam's Club. So as for groceries, that can be up to $400 per month depending on the individual. And if you're one who appreciates pleasing the palate, then your groceries and food can be up to $600 per month, including eating out. Now, Let's hop into your entertainment costs. This category can be tricky as it varies from person to person. If you enjoy these simple pleasures in life, like perhaps a walk in the park, a simple movie at the theaters, or perhaps even a little drink, then your entertainment costs will be fairly low. However, if you really want to experience what this city has to offer, I'm talking the nightlife, the bars, the clubs, the massages, and spas, your entertainment costs can hit up to even $1,000 per month. Once again, if you're one who doesn't spend much, then you can easily live on less than $3,000 per month here. As for the last category that we'll cover for cost of living, that is your medical costs. This is perhaps the number one reason why expats choose to retire in BGC. Why? Well, BGC is home to the most renowned hospital in the entire country, St. Luke's Medical Center. And so, God forbid anything takes a turn for the worse, you can have peace of mind knowing that you're within proximity to a world-class hospital. That being said, based Basic expenses like medical insurance and checkups will cost you around $100 to 
$1,000 per month. Now, I know I didn't cover your transportation costs. Reason being is because Bonifacio Global City is a pedestrian friendly city where everything is within walking distance to each other. Literally, to get from one end of the city to another just walking, it'll take you no more than 20 minutes. So unless you're going out to the province, you'll rarely need a car here. In short, your transportation costs in BGC will likely be your lowest expense. So now that we got that covered, what's your total expenses looking like in BGC? I'm talking the kind of cost of living that you can not only just experience this city, but the entire country to the full and not just live as if you're just scratching by and pinching pennies. Well, on average, your realistic expenses will range from around $3,000 to $4,000 per month. Now keep in mind, when I made these figures, it was because I also included, what if you take a trip out to the province? What if you take a flight out to Palawan or to Shirigao? I want the best lifestyle for you when you live in the Philippines, so I took that into consideration. I don't imagine that a lot of you guys are just gonna live in BGC purely and not go out and experience whatever else the Philippines has to offer. Now, I understand this may sound happy to some, but the finest things in life, of course, come with a price. In the case of BGC, you're not just paying for a half decent condo and some streets without potholes in it. What you're really paying for is one, a metropolitan city with top tier infrastructure and urban planning. Secondly, having no shortage of Western conveniences like globally known retail stores, malls, and restaurants. And most important of all, you're paying for the safety and the low crime rate. That being said, as per supply and demand, BGC offers every comfort of living in the West that most other cities in the Philippines have yet to achieve with their infrastructure, hence the more expensive prices here. All the while, you're only a one to two hour away from the tropical beaches of the Philippines. So as we close, you essentially get the best of both worlds here. The conveniences and comforts of living in the West meets the charms of Southeast Asia. Which, speaking of, leads me to my next question to address. What is the location like of BGC? Well, BGC is a master plan 240 hectare mixed use estate situated within the heart of Taguig City. Being the country's leading central business and lifestyle district, it's become a hub for shopping, dining, and entertainment. But perhaps the best part about living in BGC is that everything is within reach. What do I mean by this? Whether you want to take a flight out to Boracay and experience the tropical beaches, or you want to explore the surrounding cities, everything is within reach. Because it's located in Taguig, it's near the center of every major city within Manila, while also being in between the provinces north and south of Luzon. Meaning you're conveniently situated 15 to 20 minutes away from every major city in Manila. Be it Ortigas, Mandaluyong, Pasig, or Makati, all these cities are roughly 10 to 20 minutes away. Meanwhile, you're only one to two hour drive away from the brisk mountains of Tagaytay or the tropical beaches of Batangas. Like myself, you probably will want your home base to be a comfortable place to stay on your day-to-day -day basis. But say you want a weekend getaway from the concrete jungle for a change of pace. You can easily access beaches and resorts with only a two hour drive away from the city. For example, earlier this year for me, my weekend getaway consisted of a five hour road trip to the cold mountain town of Baguio. It was extremely fun and those five hours flew by really fast. And about a month ago, our latest trip was an easy peasy $50 flight out to Shergao to go surfing. And so needless to say, though BGC is a bubble, you can easily access the beauties of the Philippines with minimal hassle. Now let's move on to the attractions in BGC, starting with High Street. Bonifacio High Street is an iconic recreational and shopping center situated within the heart of BGC. The street is most loved due to its diverse retail stores and outdoor ambiance that elevate shopping to a whole new experience. Being one kilometer long, the promenade presents itself with wide walkways on both sides lined with a variety of establishments. From a mixture of high-end boutiques and internationally known retail stores to a plethora of restaurants, this boulevard makes for a spectacular leisure and entertainment spot. And then you go to the very end of High Street and you stumble across one Bonifacio High Street. This is arguably the most expensive part of BGC with the most premium steakhouses, hotels, and retail stores. For example, the infamous Shangri-La at the Fort, Raging Bull Steakhouse, and Wolfgang Steakhouse is all situated on one Bonifacio High Street. Aside from that, the best retail stores and cafes can be found on this walk. Uptown Bonifacio is a 15 hectare first class township consisting of corporate office buildings, international BPO companies, nightclubs, and at the focal point of this township, 
Uptown Mall. This is a five-story flagship mall consisting of a variety of local and international establishments. Be it shopping or dining, there's an abundance of retail stores and eateries that you can find here. And then we take a few steps outside of Uptown Mall, we cross the street, and just in close proximity to that, we find the infamous Uptown Parade. If you're looking for the best nightlife, this is the best walk to go to. This parade walk, most popular for its lively nightlife scene, is comprising of food trucks, mini bars, a diversity of eateries, and of course the infamous Zylo. Zylo is arguably the most popular high-end nightclub within the entire country, especially catering towards a younger crowd with the DJs and also the bars that they have inside. I believe to enter into Zylo, it's gonna cost you around $40 or 2,000 pesos. But as you can see, as you look down Uptown Parade, we find a beautiful long walk or a promenade for lack of better terms. Right here, we have food trucks. There's a series of food trucks here. A lot of the guys and girls that party at Zyla will often come out to these food trucks, get a quite quick bite to eat of Mexican food. And then at the very end of the line, we have popular American establishments like Randy's Donuts from California and Denny's from the US. Other than that, so many different restaurants, so many different bars to check out here at Zylo and in Uptown Parade. Last honorable mention about Uptown Bonifacio is that you have the prestigious and premium Grand Hyatt here, as well as the newly opened Mitsikoshi Mall, which is actually the first and only Japanese mall to ever be in the Philippines. Now, moving on to the third attraction, most especially popular for the Manila locals, that is Market Market. Market Market is the closest experience you'll get to authentic Philippines within the westernized city of BGC. Whether it be bargaining for fresh local fruits and vegetables or sharpening your haggling skills, this is the place to be. That being said, this exotic market brimming with energy and oozing with character boasts a variety of local establishments. From local stalls selling native delicacies to globally known retail stores to scavenge from, this outlet has everything that you could possibly imagine when it comes to local food. Absolutely, Market Market is most popular for this BS market. As a matter of fact, allow me to show you around Fiesta Market. So here's the main area where you find a variety of vendors and stalls selling fresh fruits and vegetables, refreshing fruit shakes on a hot day, flower bouquets, and several other native products to the Philippines. Having said that, Fiesta Market is one of the best places that you can go to, especially in a relatively more expensive city like BGC to find infectious fruits and vegetables at an inexpensive price. Other than the Fiesta Market and the local stalls that are all outdoors, if you want to go into an air-conditioned mall, as you can see right behind me, we have a mall here full of affordable retail stores and restaurants. So to really wrap up this entire area here, you have the inside of Market Market with the established retail stores, and then behind us, we find all these stalls where you can haggle, also get deals for the most cheap prices. Be it clothing, purses, jewelry, food, vegetables, all of that for an inexpensive price can be haggled for outside. Now for our fourth attraction in BGC, also popular for its lively nightlife, that is Forbes Town. Forbes Town is a mixed use development comprising of residential condos, a diversity of eateries, and many pubs on a long promenade. Essentially, Forbes Town Road is a long road lined with restaurants, bars, pubs, and stores on both your left and right hand side. But perhaps the most popular attraction that I mentioned here in Forbes Sound is of course Burgo Circle. Essentially, Burgo Circle is a circular rotunda also called the Circle of Life with at the center a bronze sculpture which is the main piece of this park. Commonly, we find residents and tourists alike taking pictures in this peaceful park. Now, while peaceful in the daytime, at nighttime, Forbes Sound becomes a lively nightlife scene for people of all ages. From local brewery, to classy wine bars. It doesn't matter what age you are, everybody comes here for a good night out. And it's clear to me that the focal point of Forbes Sound is the nightlife. That's why we find long streets here in Forbes Sound filled with bars and especially fried chicken restaurants to satiate those who drank the night away. So that being said, as we wrap up Forbes Sound, this place has a healthy mix between a peaceful daytime and a lively nightlife scene. Now, time to cater to a very vital attraction in BGC, that is SM Aura. SM Aura is distinctly known for its unique exterior architecture. Plain and simple, it's an upscale mall with 
a ton of retail stores at the bottom, and then it scales upwards into a tall office building. And so as you can see behind me, very simple layout to SM Aura. It's five stories tall and every restaurant and store they could possibly need or want is pretty much going to be within SM Aura. And as per the modeling culture here in the Philippines, people from all over Manila flock to this mall to enjoy a leisurely day of shopping, dining, and going to all the stores here. Be it a food court, a rooftop deck overlooking the entire city, a buffet, and even a supermarket, almost everything you can ask for can be found within this mall. Now that we got the attractions covered, our next order of business that all retirees have to attend to is the healthcare. As mentioned earlier, BGC is home to the leading and most respected healthcare institution within the Philippines, St. Luke's Medical Center. Now, I understand one of your main concerns about moving to the Philippines may have been the healthcare, but rest assured, St. Luke's is actually on par with some of the most advanced medical facilities in the entire world. As a matter of fact, it was once recognized by Health News Exec being in the top 25 of the most beautiful hospitals in the world. The institution houses sanitary, spacious facilities with advanced medical equipment to supply all your needs. And rewinding to its origins, St. Luke's has been running since 1982 and has grown to specialize in all kinds of treatments and services. In addition to that, you as an expat can be sure to get world-class treatment because all the staff are experts in their respective field. Now let's talk prices. If you're looking to get an executive checkup, which includes everything, even a stay within the executive suite, expect to pay around $200 for a checkup. Of course, they have cheaper checkup options, but prices may vary depending on the service that you decide to get. As for an outpatient looking to get cardio metabolic health screening, that kind of checkup would cost you $360, for example. And if you were to get a golden health screening to check up for any possible health problems that may arise, that would cost you around $450. Then of course, they also have more expensive options such as private rooms, which cost around $600, a suite room, which costs $800, and a presidential room, which would cost $1,600 for the state. Talk about a hotel and hospital all in one. Now, while these prices may sound hefty, there are also cheaper checkup options that won't break the bank like a $50 consultation that they offer. All right, of course, with any other city you live in, you want to be assured that you're surrounded by a good crowd of neighbors. So let's talk BGC's demographic of people. In the case of this metropolis, you have nothing to worry about. BGC's primary crowd of people comprise of three categorized groups. Number one, young working professionals. This is a very, very prevalent crowd here. Being that the city is a major financial and business district in Manila, you'll find many young corporate employees living here. Second group of people goes to foreigners and expats. Needless to say, this city is a melting pot of foreigners from all around the globe. Be it Europe, Australia, and especially the US and Canada, there's no shortage of characters from all walks of life. And now the third demographic of people that live here are retirees. I mean, come on. A convenient lifestyle paired with excellent healthcare, that's what most retirees require at the least when choosing where to settle down. And on a side note, unlike most other areas in Manila, BGC is a relatively quiet and peaceful city in comparison to the other surrounding cities within Manila, especially on the weekdays. It's quiet enough to have peace, but also crowded enough to meet new people so that you don't get bored living here. And the last group of people I'd like to add that live in BGC are of course visitors. Like I mentioned earlier, BGC is a retail and shopping hub within the country. So especially on the weekends, you'll find many upper class residents from the surrounding surrounding areas of Manila spend a leisurely shopping and dining day here in BGC. And it's one of the only ideal places with many cafes and shops to explore. So with thousands of many young working professionals, foreigners, retirees, and visitors coming in and out of the city every day, it's safe to say that you get a healthy work play lifestyle here. That being said, with this crowd of people that are only here for either work or relaxation, there's very seldom any crime in the city. And that leads me to my next point. What's crime like in BGC? Well, this city is considered to be one of the safest residential and business neighborhoods within the Philippines. You will rarely ever see any crime incidents happen in BGC on the news, but I'm gonna give it to you straight and I just wanna look out for you. I did some digging, right? And initially, when you search up crime rates in BGC, it's virtually non-existent. But I wanted to do some more research and it turns out that we still do get crime incidents here in BGC, but it's just never displayed on the news or on social media. Don't get me wrong, 
wrong, VGC still has some of the lowest crime rates in the country. But for full transparency, there has been a few cases of victims being held up for robbery and even one particular case where a lady jumped off of the 28th floor of her building committing suicide. So as much as I promote the city because living here has been nothing but peaceful for the past four years for me and my family, I wouldn't want to compromise these unspoken of details for you to know. So just trying to watch out for you, crime rates are rare but they still do occur here. And though it's the safest city in the country, outsiders not from this city are still well aware that a lot of upper and middle class people live here. That said, watch out for tandem motorcycle riders and really any out of the ordinary activity that you see. In my personal experience, I've always felt completely safe in BGC. I don't know, maybe it's my faith in God, but I never ever felt like my life was in danger unlike how it was when I was living in Chicago. Here, I can peacefully roam the streets and go for walks in the middle of the night without any shadow of a doubt that I'll be fine. Of course, I keep my guard up, but it's not like walking around the rest of Manila per se, where you constantly have to scan the environment and make sure you watch your belongings. Speaking of peace, that leads me to our daily Bible verse. John 14, 27 says, My peace I leave with you, my peace I give you, I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Look, I'll get a lot of hate and unsubs for this, but the truth is nothing can give you peace like the peace that Christ gives because the peace that He gives surpasses all understanding. If I can share my personal testimony, and I know you can relate with me, I've tried finding peace and fulfillment in everything in this world. Money, relationships, materialistic pleasures, nothing, and I mean nothing, has given me more peace than knowing Jesus and His sacrifice for me. Sure, you can get peace from knowing that you're financially secure. Sure, you can get peace knowing that you have a healthy relationship. But my friends, I want you guys to know that the only peace that will surpass and ascend past the hardest and most chaotic times in your life is the peace of of Christ. And so there you have it, Savvy Expats. This video only just scratches the surface of going about your retirement in BGC. If you're intrigued in hearing more about this city, we have exclusive content in our full guide in the link down below. You can find it in the second link and get access to all the information that you need for making the move to this city and also even join our private community of BGC residents and expats planning on making the move to the city. At the end of the day, my goal is to save you time and money. So if you're thinking about moving to the Philippines, and you want to bypass all the hassle that most foreigners don't know about moving here, then check out the guide down below. And so thank you for watching Savvy Expats and I'll see you in the next video. God bless.